Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Last summer, I found myself driving across Kyrgyzstan with my girlfriend Aishola. We'd travelled the 300 miles from Bishkek with the goal of delivering aid to the hospitals in the east of the country. Handing stuff out, it's not, it's not massive. We're not pretending that it is, but it's, it's something. Please check out my previous video if you'd like to learn more about that. Now, with all the medical supplies dropped off, we had seven days left with the hire car. Seven days that we plan to fully utilize, taking the wiggly mountainous route back to Bishkek and checking out anything and everything that took our fancy along the way. So please join us on our week-long car camping adventure through the spectacular countryside of Kyrgyzstan. After leaving Karakol, we headed west along the bank of Lake Issachar. After months stuck in Bishkek in lockdown, we were both thoroughly enjoying the freedom of being able to travel again. The closest thing we had to a plan was to drive up into the mountains and find a remote place to spend the night. So we soon turned off the lake and drove south down what looked like quite an interesting unsealed road towards the snowy peaks. Gonna leave the road now and find somewhere to camp by the lake. Um, bit of off-roading, but it should be absolutely fine. Da, 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 da. The lake we're camping tonight. This is as deep as I want to go, actually. Because I don't want to go onto that. That looks like it could be wet. So yeah. let's just drive onto here. No, over there. See, it's flat over here. I think we're about 4,000 meters. It's not warm. It's <laughs> so we had thought we'd, that we'd uh, park up the car and then get the tent out and camp there. But then we thought, well, if the seats go down, maybe we can camp in the car tonight because it's bloody freezing. Oh my God, yeah, they do actually. They just go forward. They go forward. Oh, <gasps> <laughs> 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 yeah, and I, I didn't bring any trousers, all I have is, uh, is my shorts. Because <laughs> I didn't really anticipate I was going up this high. This is kind of just a, it's a bit of a whim, wasn't it? Just going up on this road. Beautiful road though. Oh dear, things are going numb. <sighs> As light was fading, we set about preparing for bed. Are we making pasta? Uh, I want noodles. Okay, I'll do noodles then. Yeah. <laughs> I fired up my trusty petrol stove for cooking dinner, and I shola sourced out the bedding to lay in the back of the car. The nearest village from where we'd parked was over 30 miles away, and it felt great to be back out in the mountains somewhere so remote. And as a bonus, the lack of light pollution coupled with the cloudless night sky meant the stars that night were out in full force. But before we continue with our road trip, first a quick word from this video's sponsor. Surfshark is a VPN app and browser extension that lets you change your IP address in order to unblock websites and content that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. It also adds an extra layer of security to help keep your passwords and personal data safe. But why use Surfshark over any other VPN? First off, they're one of the most affordable, and if you use the code EDPRATT, you'll get 83% off plus three extra months free which works out to just $2.21 per month. They're also the only VPN to offer the use of one account on an unlimited number of devices. As I'm currently living in Kyrgyzstan, I use Surfshark to access the various different content libraries of Netflix. Because if you didn't know, not all shows and movies are available in every country. For example, I recently enjoyed Joanna Lumley's Silk Road Adventure, a documentary traveling along the Silk Road 
covering similar areas that Ishola and I explore in this video. For whatever reason, this series is only currently available on the Singapore version of Netflix. But that was no bother, because with Surfshark, I simply clicked into the Singapore location to watch it. So please use my code EDPRATT to nab 83% off and try it out for yourself. And by installing it through my link below, it actually supports the channel. So you receive a great deal, and it helps me keep producing videos. And if you decide, actually, this isn't for me, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there really is no risk to trying it out for yourself. The link is in the description below. Now back to the video. The next morning gave us a proper look at the gem of a campsite we've found the night before. What a ridiculously pretty place. Our plan for the morning was simple. At the end of the road was a place called Kumtor, a gold mining project. We didn't know how close we'd be able to get to the facility, or what exactly we'd be able to see, but seeing that neither of us had ever been to this corner of the country, we decided it'd be something worth checking out. So we drove in that direction, and at the very least, it would be enjoyable following this virtually trafficless road through the snow-capped peaks. Now, Kunta is the, uh, I think, is the biggest uh, gold mining company uh, shared by Kyrgyzstan and Canada. I think Canada gets sixty percent because most of the machines they send to it and yeah, they are operating it. Seems like a good deal, doesn't it? It is a good deal yeah, for, for Canada. <laughs> we're coming to a kind of checkpoint now. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get through. I mean, it's pretty much the end of the road anyway, but there was a lake that we wanted to see. But I suspect we might not be allowed through. Yeah, where's your mask? Where's my mask? Or whatever. Yeah. Здравствуйте, не подскажете озеро? озеро туда уже нельзя. А, все, ага. Ага, хорошо, все, спасибо большое. No, they need a permit, so yeah. you need a permit to enter. Yeah, it's there. fine, isn't it? It's not that interesting anyway. Let's make a let's make a loop then. Before we drove away, we parked up to check out what we could have come to from the road. This is probably where are they mining at the moment. Not only this is the whole mining area, and there as well, all this kind of like a black area. Yeah, it looks like it looks like volcano. Yeah, I guess it's part of the process. It's just kind of waste material, isn't it? Yes. Unfortunately. Anyway, with many much more beautiful places on our route, we decided not to spend any more time here and head back down the road. On our way, we stopped to make a short hike up to Barscoon Waterfall, watched this absolute mad lad show off to his family, and then carried on down the road back to Issacool Lake. Our plan now was to continue driving west into Narin region, and make some progress towards Kyrgyzstan's second largest lake, a place we figured could make quite an interesting campsite that night. So we settled in to a somewhat bumpy 150 mile drive. We're now in Narin, and we're making our way to Songkul, which is, I suspect, the biggest lake in Narin. Uh, in the mountains. Down, in the mountain. Three thousand meters, or even more, I think. Yeah, it's high up. Yeah. Got another 40k or something of this road <laughs> track. But yeah, it's not too bad. It's reasonably smooth. I'm sure you can hear it. It's a bit bumpy. Mm, let's find the shore. Yeah, I want to get some fruit. I really want some. Ooh. Sorry, I didn't see that. I really want some apples. <laughs> yeah. Well, the shop we came across didn't exactly have apples. I know that. Uh -huh. got it. <laughs> but we made a creative compromise and carried on towards Songkor. Oh no, back onto the dirt, no? <gasps> Gosh, that match just scared me. Well, it's better than going over that bump. Sorry, I seem to be yeah. totally blind to that.
We eventually made it in sight of Songkul, but we couldn't yet drive down to its bank. The road here turned left, so we followed it, driving parallel to the lake, looking out for a path that would take us down to the water's edge. My shoulder took over the wheel for this section, and we cruised past yurt camps and horses, with the only real traffic coming in the form of dim sheep. Watch out for this guy, he looks like he's going to, yep. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing Thank great. you. After 20 miles or so, the road finally intersected the lake's edge, and we parked up nearing sunset, excited that we found such a gorgeous campsite. Yeah, not bad, not bad spot. There's a bunch of yurt camps around, um, but um, we're assuming that we're fine just to park up and just camp. Uh, nobody really owns this place. So that's what we're going to do, camp on Songkul. But it didn't take long to discover that maybe this wasn't such a great place to park up after all. Yeah, okay, we just realised actually camping right next to the lake probably isn't the best idea because we're getting a lot of mosquitoes coming out and it's only going to get worse uh, during the night. So I think new plan is we're going to try and drive up onto the top of those hills somewhere and there we shouldn't be affected by mosquitoes but we'll still have a lovely view of the lake so the pass is over there do you see yeah i see it yeah. it's just a <laughs> right so we're uh so gonna we're... go up there i'm hoping this is one of these hills which the looks steep. bad yeah, from but... far back <laughs> but actually isn't too terrible I think, we, I think we dropped into first gear now, which seems to be feeling all right. Oh, come on, go! Yeah, no, I think we're fine. I think we're absolutely fine. That was the worst of it there. Look at that. <laughs> Very cool. sunrise because <laughs> we're in a cloud so it's a good job we're going down the hill this morning because I don't think we can't be able to get up it because the ground is pretty muddy now so hopefully we don't have any problems getting back down to the lake onwards then down the hill let's see how we do ah rocks under the wheels yeah rocks okay. under the wheels <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh, let's try again. Seat belt on. Yes. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, no, we're absolutely fine. Yeah. You just feel scary. Yeah, it looks scarier. <laughs> yeah. And we are back to the road. Nice. No cars, no traffic. So we are going back, right? Or. We're going, going this way. No, we're carrying on. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We continued on around the lake. The idea now to head south back to the main road through a gorge. And what a gorge it turned out to be. Part way down the mountain, the sky just opened up pelting the hillside with hail. And I'm not gonna lie, it's rare times like these that make me thankful that we were inside a cozy Lexus and not making this trip on bicycles. The weather promptly cleared up and we arrived back to sealed roads, our sights now set for a certain Silk Road caravanserai. But first, we decided to pass through Narin City. 
We pulled into a red petroleum, 27 pence per litre, not bad. Filled up the car, and then hit the road once more, over a pass, and down through some gorgeous undulating hills. Where are we going, Ashola? Short little detour. So, we are going to the castle, uh, which was Koshoi Korbon. So, this castle was built a long time ago. Um, by the legend, it says that it was built by uh, uncle of Manas, the uh, epic hero of Kyrgyz people, um, who existed in 17th centuries. Because Narin, this region, is very close to the uh, China, especially to the uh, Xinjiang. Just over those mountains, yeah, isn't so it? Yes, over those mountains. And this castle was built especially to protect Kyrgyz people from uh, China invading Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, so. so... It's a bit of a ruin now. There were nice pictures of castle, like, looking, you know... Ah, uh, like old recreations, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but at the moment it looks like little hills. <laughs> but you can see, I think, a little... Door. Yeah, yeah, you can see, it, yeah. you can see where the walls used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. Get the train up. Have a little look. Made out of literal mud, it was pretty impressive how much of this place has survived over 900 years. Positioned right at the base of the mountains, you could really get a sense of its strategic location here, ready to immediately fend off any Chinese invaders if they started marching over the hilltops. We had fun walking the perimeter of the fortress, but the initial reason we'd driven out to this edge of the country was just round the corner, so we said goodbye to Koshoi Korgon and pushed on down the road. We followed the smooth highway down towards the Chinese border, then finally reached the correct junction. It was now time to drive to Tashrabat. Caravansarai, it's like uh, ancient hotels um, for the people who are going to the, I don't know, through, yeah, along, along the Silk, silk Road, road. yeah. Through so um, they were just coming all the way on a Silk Way road, going to China or either coming from China. It was quite dangerous, to be honest, staying in these hotels because, you know, there were always people who would attack, who would always either take what you're bringing to the other countries or what you've got. So yeah, so it's very interesting yeah. to see all this stuff. They uh, offered a bit of shelter, didn't they? For the yeah, elves. no, oh, look at that! Did you see that? <laughs> oh my god, he's incredibly cute! There is one as well! There's two of them! What had Ishola so excited were these little guys. Chubby groundhogs that have made their homes right alongside the Silk Road. <laughs> he's like, look at look. Oi! Can you picture camels I walking can. through this valley? Yeah, no, I can picture it. Yeah, there's lots of camels just walking by, horses just loaded with, loaded stuff, with yeah. stuff. Yeah, just passing through this gorge. Look at this mountain, it's yeah. crazy. There he is. And it's absolutely lashing it down. All right, so that's Tashrabat, and it's absolutely lashing it down. <laughs> but yeah, thinking about it, it's not it's not bad sort of atmosphere, is it? Because I'm sure a lot of convoys came through here 
and it was probably very similar weather to this and yeah. they were very thankful to see this building and to stay there and to stay there i'm sure none of this was here then <laughs> i'm sure it was just uh probably yeah just a dirt track wasn't it yeah and then and then this building and i bet they were like, like a, a proper uh, parking lot for the camel <laughs> and for the horses over there and then the lady comes and says like Coming in, this Coming is here. Stasha, but <laughs> do you want to stay here? Stay here. What you've got. <laughs> yeah. And they will bring like silk and gold and all the stuff. That's and, it. and there'll be other people somewhere in the mountains ready to attack. <laughs> <laughs> Drama llama. That's, yeah, so. uh, no. Very cool. A quiet lady soon appeared and ushered us up to the entrance. She unlocked the gate, charged us a small fee and let us inside. It's very dark, isn't it? <laughs> this is also, oh, look at this. Wow. This, this is probably the main hall. They were saying that there are 31 rooms and this building was made in 14th century. So between 14.0 till 14.98. Yeah, something like this. It's so spooky. There is also a room there. Oh, yeah. I think if I, if I came here, yeah. I'd be sleeping on that shelf. Yeah. <laughs> or that shelf. Yes. Yeah. We found the toilets. We found the toilets. So this big log, oh big log, so big, uh, <laughs> big piece of rock would have been on oh, that hole. And then you would squat down. Uh, yeah. Do your business. And. You yeah. thought about doing it, didn't you? And, you're like, <laughs> and there's no, there's no doors. So everyone can look uh, what you're doing. And hear what you're doing. Nice echoes. This is another room. Wow, proper hidey hole, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so come, coming in. It's my room, so I'm staying here. I mean, it's not the best room here. Everything was busy, so this is. What I can afford. <laughs> oh, you know, it's very, it's very cozy. It's very cozy. You've got a, you've got a rock. Yeah, and I also got a double bed. This is my double bed. <laughs> How are you gonna sleep on it? You just, you know, you, you know, you have to kind of squeeze yourself like. like yeah, go on. Don't demonstrate it. <laughs> <laughs> you start with this joke. Okay. <laughs> That's it. And uh, oh, let's say have a comfortable night. Comfortable. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I'm very glad we took the opportunity to drive out and see Tashrabat. It was an eerie place to explore, and frankly just impressive how well it survived over the years. But unfortunately, as this wasn't the 14th century anymore, and Tashrabat was no longer a functioning hotel, we needed to start thinking about where we were going to rest that night. So we said farewell to the caravanserai, filled up our water at a nearby spring, and headed on back to the main road. On the map, we'd spotted Chattakul, a lake right next to the Chinese border. Figuring this could make a nice wild camp, we drove on to check it out. But it seemed we wouldn't be camping there tonight. I, think. Uh, I guess military stuff works. Yeah, I guess it's like a checkpoint before the checkpoint. A mile or so from the lake, we were met with this. This wasn't the Chinese border, but there was a military base here preventing us from continuing. Yeah, no, you have to get a permit. So yeah, fair enough. Let's, let's oh well, we tried. Yep. That's why the road's so uh, quiet, isn't it? <laughs> so we turned back and stopped at a guest house just down the road that we'd seen earlier that day. It turned out that the guest house wasn't currently operating because it had only recently been built and still didn't have any electricity. But we stopped anyway and asked if we can camp around back. Uh, can we park there? The lady living there seemed a little wary of us, but eventually agreed. We'd certainly found some much prettier places to sleep on this trip, but hey, it was somewhere reasonably safe, and we were just too tired to care. So we wolfed down some noodles, then headed to sleep. And that was pretty much it from our little expedition. With one day left on the hire car, we now just needed to drive back to Bishkek. So we pointed the car north and began the long winding drive back over the mountains towards the capital. It had been a seriously enjoyable trip, and in a lot of ways, a novel one. For obvious reasons, I hadn't done a lot of driving over the last few years, 
and travelling by car, opposed to by unicycle, was a fun experience. It certainly didn't come with the same physical challenge, but being able to cover large distances to make it out to many of the places we've been wanting to see for a while was a massive benefit. And in the wilds of Kyrgyzstan at least, car touring let us retain the freedom of being able to pretty much park up anywhere we wanted and camp, an aspect that I loved. All in all, it was a great time, and I hope you enjoyed following along with us. What my next video will be, I have absolutely no idea, but I hope you stick around for the ride. Hey de hey, happy new year. I hope you're having a great start to your 2021. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm assuming you did because you made it to the end of this 20 minute plus video. Um, I just want to take the opportunity now to tell you about my new video course that I put out on how to ride a unicycle. It's a 20 minute course and it covers the basics from literally, if you know nothing about unicycling, then it'll take you from, from that point to being able to get on and be reasonably proficient with riding. Um, so, I know, if it's something that you're, you're interested in learning and you want to be taught by me, um, then this course is available on Vimeo. And the bonus to this course is that it's content that I'm never going to put out for free anywhere. It's always going to be on Vimeo paid. So if you pick it up, um, you're supporting me, obviously, and you know that you're watching content that no one else has ever seen before. I'll leave a link to the course uh, in the description. And as always, I want to thank everyone who's supported me on Patreon, and uh, especially the people that are supporting me on the third tier. And you lovely lot are Adam Wan, Alicanthea Beer, Alistair Duran, Campbell Daff, uh, Alina and Anton Berg, Christopher Jansons, Damon Walker, Gaydon Navaya, Gary Hall, Jeff and Kelly Elder, James Wallace, Joseph and Rebecca Chivers, Malvin Zen, Mark Paris, Philip Merritt, Stephen Jones, Neil Brooks, Warren Snyder, and Wolfie. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.